Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to do a quick review of Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. Now, this is also known as the Golden Compass in certain other regions, including in America. There's obviously the uh, film version of this was named The Golden Compass as well. And this is the first book in Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy. Uh, this was actually a reread for me and I also listened to it on audiobook as well. So the reason I went back to it is for Catalyst Reads uh, Rereadathon. So this is a year long event in which there are different challenges for different months. And in January, one of the challenges was uh, to reread one of our favorite books. And Northern Lights was always my favorite book as a kid. Even now as an adult, when people ask me what my favorite book is, I tend to cite this one. And that happens a lot as well in like, I do author interviews and all this kind of stuff. And booktube tags as well comes up a lot. What is your favorite book? And so you've probably heard me talk about this book on my channel. Like I said, I listened to this on an audiobook. I actually found it on YouTube. I'm pretty sure somebody's just, you know, ripped off the copyright when, when they're not legally allowed to upload it, but whatever. You can listen to it on YouTube, so I'll include the link below in case you want to check that out. It was a kind of full cast audiobook with one narrator, unfortunately I don't know who the narrator was, and then different actors and actresses playing all of the different voices. And I thought that was great, it kind of really helped to immerse you into the story. My uh, girlfriend actually listened to it with me as well and she said that she doesn't think she would have been able to stick with it if she'd actually been reading it because a lot of the different words in it are kind of complicated words I guess and uh, having a narrator actually read it aloud for her made it more approachable. For her as well it was actually her first time reading it so for me it was obviously a rereading I knew exactly what was going to happen. And so we both got very different things about it, but all in all, we both enjoyed it. I actually tried to get her to come and do this review with me, but she wouldn't, so I'm filming it while she's at work. So for me, this was actually the first time I've reread it since I discovered it's a retelling of Paradise Lost. I mean, I haven't read Paradise Lost, but I'm kind of familiar with the story. It's basically the story of Adam and Eve. And yeah, the entire trilogy is kind of a retelling of that, but very much with Pullman's kind of own spin on it. It's almost fantasy, I would say. But then equally, it's kind of steampunky at times. I think one of the great things about these books is that the characters have demons, which are basically an animal version of your soul that you can talk to. When, they, when you're a kid, they can change form. And so when I used to read these books, I always used to kind of like to think about what my demon would be. And again, it's interesting because my demon wouldn't have settled on its form when I first read this book, but it definitely would have done now. There are lots of things I picked up on that I wouldn't have picked up on before. So for example, in, in the uh, retiring room, they're smoking poppy and poppy is effectively just opium. So they're smoking opium or basically taking heroin is what they're doing. I also liked how uh, Lyra and Pan bicker with each other, although I did think as well, surely that's a bit like arguing with your own soul, but it works well in the context of this world. I like the fact that people and their demons don't always think exactly the same. I thought it was kind of made them all very much more three-dimensional as characters. There was one part in this as well when they went to see the Egyptians, and by the way, I'd completely forgotten about the Egyptians and I've forgotten how badass they all are. You know, Father Coram is my homeboy. There's also some foreshadowing in it as well because Pullman at one point during the writing, he says that Roger would follow Lyra to the ends of the earth and, you know, spoiler alert, he does. And further spoiler alert, bad things happen to him. I also like that they got drunk at the start as well. It's, it's a weird book because the first third of it or so is very much kind of targeted more towards children, I think, and this childish way of looking at the world. And then Lyra kind of has to start maturing as they go to the north to try and rescue the kids. So for those of you who haven't read this before, I should probably read the blurb actually. I normally do that. When Lyra's friend Roger disappears, she and her demon, Pantalaimon, determine to find him. The ensuing quest leads them to the bleak splendour of the north, where armoured bears rule the ice and witch queens fly through the frozen skies, and where a team of scientists is conducting experiments too horrible to be spoken about. Lyra overcomes these strange terrors, only to find something yet more perilous waiting for her. Something with consequences which may even reach beyond the Northern Lights. And that there is a bit foreshadowing for book two as well. I also think in ways this is kind of very subtly feminist because it does have the patriarchy there, but it does have this underlying message of smash the patriarchy and, you know, Lyra is this young, young girl and... You know, she's kind of the hope for the future, and I think 
that's quite relevant today in that I think today's young girls are our hope for the future, you know. I also think, going back to the Egyptians, I love the Fens, the entire area that they, they live in. I think Pullman's descriptive parts for that are great. Equally to the north as well, he's really good at making places seem real. And you feel the threat as well, especially when you get to things like Svalbard and you meet the Panzerbjorn, who are the armoured bears, who are really badass. And then there's Serafina Pakala and uh, Fada Coram. So Serafina Pakala is like a witch queen, basically. And Fada Coram is this wise old man from the Egyptians. And the Egyptians are basically, you know, the Pullman's world's equivalent of, you know, Romany gypsies, I guess. And uh, they fell in love when Father Coram was a young man and then they had to go their separate ways. And because she's a witch, Serafina Pakala doesn't age, whereas Father Coram has gone, gone on to become this old man who walks with a stick. And I thought it was very interesting to see that side of, you know, how love can be bad and how it's that, that classic, you know, take on immortality where people say they wish they were immortal, but it would be awful if you were immortal and nobody else was, you know. You just have to watch everybody you know and love eventually grow old and die. But all in all, I mean, I would say I enjoyed this book just as much as I was expecting to. It still retains its position at my uh, the top of my list of favourite books. And I would still very much give this a 5 out of 5 stars. I suggest you check it out. And like I said, I will include the link below to the audiobook for this. Now, because I picked this up for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon, I don't plan to reread The Subtle Knife or The Amber Spyglass. And uh, my girlfriend said she's probably not going to continue with the series as well, but just because she doesn't really read much at all. You know, I think, in fact, this audiobook is so far the only thing she's read this year and will probably continue to be the only thing that she's read this year until we listen to my February choice for the rereadathon, which is The Sign of the Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So keep your eyes peeled in February for a review of that. In the meantime, do let me know if you've read this book and if so, what your thoughts are. And in the meantime, be sure to hit subscribe for more bookish videos. Check out the uh, rereadathon as well and uh, take part in that because it's a lot of fun and I will see you soon for more bookish videos. Thanks a lot. Bye.